streaming series. We're creating a website with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Uh, we're, this website is coming from the an existing Django or Drupal Drupal website, and we're porting it over to, to Django. We've built a lot of it out. Um, where we're at right now, we've got a basic working magazine. Uh, this is the Drupal side of things. This is the work in progress website. So we have issues and magazine titles, authors, and links between them all. We recently refactored the article author to be a more generic data type called contact. Uh, today what I'm going to try to do is just add a field that lets us to select lets us select the contact type. That way we can differentiate between people and organizations and there's some specific types of organizations we want to model. So if I go to CVCRM, one of the sort of downfalls of moving from Drupal, which is PHP based over to Django, which is Python based, is we're not going to be able to support CVCRM anymore. So I'm going to sort of rebuild a subset of what CBT does. It's a really remarkable project. And I'm not even going to be able to come close to it. But what we're doing is we're following its data model. We're defining a, a model to hold our contacts. And today I'll just create um, a field contact type and we'll add these. Uh, we're not going to add meta contact types or descriptions. Hmm. Although that might be useful to extend it through the admin UI. Hmm. Well, actually, I could follow suit with what we're doing with articles and authors and make a relationship between them so contact could have a field a contact type a field let's see that is a foreign key so let me see if I can find an example of a foreign key field what's going on here what's changed uh, basically linting so I believe um, black or my formatting is running on a save and I think I'm using Python's black formatter. It's opinionated formatter. So this is just lint. So I'm working with a little bit of constrained space here. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, so the author is now deprecated. I believe I can delete that safely. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer before cleaning that up. But if we go to our magazine models, if I look at the magazine article, I see authored by. It's a person in so many fields. Parental. Well, I'm not sure if this comes from Wagtail or where is that? Let's see if it's just a yeah, model cluster.
Okay, well, after a bit of a struggle, um, and I tried to mo uh, inherit the page model for the contact, I ended up just inheriting these clusterable models and uh, the search indexable model. So I'm not sure if I need this parental many to many field. Okay, it's the page record in the revision history. In the case of magazine article, we're inheriting from a page, so a parental many to many field works. But I believe that many to many should be fine here. That's funny, this official documentation didn't come up first. Ah, but I, I need to think for just a second because many to many is not the type of relationship I'm modeling here. A contact should be relayed into only one contact type. So it's just a foreign key. Whereas magazine article authors, one author could art, uh, one author and person could author one or more magazine articles, and one magazine article could have one or more authors. So that's why we did that. Here we go. So we'll go with more direct foreign key relationship. And essentially, create a new model called contact type. And I guess I can default inherit from the default model. <laughs> so let's see. could inherit from the page model. That's going to give us a title by default. And then things like auto generating a slug and some draft staging and whatnot. Let's take a look at this model, this page model. Let's F12 to jump to source. Clusterable indexed. So by default, it's search indexed, clusterable, has a title field, auto-generating a slug, I just think maybe it's overkill. Unless we're going to display pages with the specific contact types. I don't think we are on this live site here. Oops. All right, here we go. Uh, we have this community directory and basically we have these custom, some tailor-made like views with specific queries that I'll build. I'll be building out. So we have a contact here that's a type of um, organization. It's a yearly meeting, and there's some details. We'll need to fill in these contact details fields in a minute.
So I'm just going to inherit from the model class. Let's see if we can grab a quick example. Thirty seems like enough. Let me check my Git branch, my Git history, real quick. Okay, grab. So we're only a little ways ahead of Master. Where's that? Contact. Oh, master's all the way back here. I think this is a throwaway branch. I'm just trying to think if I should be merging this into master. starting a new branch for contact type which would mean I need to clean up I'll do that I'll just clean up the code merge this in so I got that hooks I got the view everything out of author is good to go so I'll delete this and I'll reset my model over to GitHub. Which I need to check in another window real quick. And a seventy nine character limit is pretty hard. Even Black's not complaining about that, so three. Straight out of pep. Eight, I guess. Okay, there we go. So now if we check out our master branch. Fetch those changes. Ah, yeah, I did a sloppy job of cleaning it up. Damn. Well, good thing I'm working on this alone. So, settings. No, no, no. URLs.
let's see, Visual Studio Code, VS Code, cut line. Let's take a little bit of opportunity. Let's just control X. And then settings. I'm just gonna push this directly to master branch since we're prototyping here. to squash those migrations. Zero 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 one. Put in magazine migrations. somehow it's pretty challenging so I've got it <laughs> of course the author's table doesn't exist anymore because I removed it forcefully and elegantly so I'm thinking if I just remove the migrations oh shit Magazine migrations are empty. Homepage migrations are empty. 
contact migrations are empty. Author still around. Definitely, if I'm working on this with other people, I would have to start figuring out how to do this kind of stuff properly. Sorry about that, Quantum. I just see, <laughs> see your pleas for chat and interaction. I was kind of getting frustrated by these uh, this migration situation. <laughs> cool. I hope you're still in the room, Quantum. Uh, there may be some delay on the, the feed, but let me know if you have any other questions or comments. Uh, Quantum hasn't done Django and hasn't touched Python in years. It says, good luck. All right, thanks, Quanto. I appreciate that. I'm gonna grab my tea real quick. I'll be right back. thing I can do I have two monitors here and one uh, monitor is OBS and the chat the twitch kind of stuff and I think if I <coughs> put the twitch chat a little bit more in the center of my vision it was on the very edge of the screen I'll notice it yeah I was getting a little bit worried about that and we don't work those migrations not working the quantum says that uh, Migrations are useful, but can be really frustrating. All right. All right, so since we're on good footing now, cleaned up migrations, I'll merge this into master. <clears throat> And I'll probably just end up at the end of this whole prototyping phase, just resetting all the migrations again. And man, I'm getting tired of that 79 character warnings. Oh yeah, I've heard pretty good things about Laravel though. Uh, I haven't uh, worked with it personally, but it sounds like a pretty mature PHP, pretty mature web framework in general. Oops. I know it's popular in the Vue community. I think they uh, they chose Vue as their default JavaScript layer. So I've been kind of I've been digging into Vue lately. I'm pretty impressed. I'm working on it, a project at work. I'm not sure if I'll be going into Vue with uh, with this project, this Django Wagtail one. But I might have some ideas coming up with a couple of other projects I'm working on. What are some of your favorite aspects of Laravel? What like uh, what sells the framework for you? So if we hop up back over to master. And get that. Yeah. Uh Man, that's good to hear PHP isn't as bad as uh, Quantum thought it would be. Now, part of the discussion about when we were deciding, to, in fact, to migrate this site from Drupal to uh, Django Wagtail was that, um, well, P 
PHP. <laughs> I don't know. Because we're getting to the point where, firstly, this site is just buggy, and there's some bugs that are, like, very elusive. And I'm not even sure, you know, frankly, if this site is compromised. Uh, we've had, we had a hacking incident a while back. But... If I'm able, or if I'm going to have to start getting into code level stuff, I don't really want to work with PHP and Drupal at work. I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot more with JavaScript and now Python. And I think Drupal's now not built with um, Laravel, but what's the other one called? The, uh, there's another really popular PHP framework. Okay, so Laravel gets away from the from having a lot of glo global variables. It sounds like. All right, let's create a new branch. Call it Contact Types. Enter from the master branch. Now we're going to be Contact or Symphony, I think. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was probably a really good decision. I don't know. It changed. It definitely, though, it definitely fractured the Drupal community to a certain extent. I think there were some people who they forked and decided they wanted to still work with the, they call it Backdrop. I'm not sure how vibrant that community is around Backdrop any, anymore. I think I think just the main Drupal project is the where, you, where most of the people are still putting their time, but it sure, certainly is a different story and we were deliberating whether or not to migrate to from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 or what to do and I somehow had leading to say hey there's this wagtail CMS I think it's wagtail.io and when I cut my teeth on doing web development I was doing well actually not even web development sort of like website management I was using WordPress and this other one, Joomla. And started with Joomla and went over to WordPress. And the WordPress user experience, and even now, modern WordPress is just really astounding. And this Wagtail provides a WordPress like experience in the Django ecosystem, meaning kind of a uh, content manager oriented user experience instead of the developer oriented experience that Django provides and it's even ha has WordPress leanings like the content is broken up into these little fragments called it's called a stream field uh, there's a little bit of lag in the um, chat but the astounding and just how simple it is I think WordPress is I think uh, maybe I should say impressive or just um, We've come back to WordPress on a website I we're managing for um, a company I co-founded, and it's just so easy. It's just astounding that it's you can have such a, a technology that's so easy to pick up for for somebody who's ne never worked with technology. My partner Mario hasn't ever done any web development or web content management, uh, but she's just able to start managing right away. Uh, working with the content, you know, just. Basically, it's a tool that gets out of your way, and I think it, the reason maybe that's, I use the word it's astounding, um, is because I'm kind of coming from a, a little bit of history with JavaScript, where your tooling ends up sort of like wrapping you up in a ball and a knot, and you have every day is, is like a little bit of a, you're focusing almost as much on tooling as, as the... Um, sort of the project or platform you're trying to build. Uh, so I, I try to get away from that type of stuff. It's one what reason I'm gravitating towards Vue.js. I think they have that same, same kind of ethos where like the tool should get out of your way a little bit, you know, preferring convention over configuration, having good documentation, having really simple and memorable semantics, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, JavaScript is good. <laughs> Quantum is not so impartial. What's, uh, what kind of stuff do you work with in JavaScript? 
what do you do you do front end or end to end or what what do you kind of kind of projects are you building there? Yeah, the npm, yeah, and it is like should you know right when you start a, a a project in JavaScript, it's like do I use Yarn? Do I use npm? Do I use Webpack? Do I use Babel? Do I use Jest? Do I use do I use do I use? And so then that's like yeah full stack developer all right cool yeah um this other project we're working on a couple of other projects i'm working on uh, we're using a meteor js framework i think this comes in the same vein as like convention over configuration developer ergonomics developer simplicity uh, don't focus on tooling focus on building your um, product project meteor is losing its momentum a boot camp doing a a full stack boot camp what uh, what are they what are they indoctrinating you or are they teaching you <laughs> well boot camp i think if you're in the military sense uh it lasts <laughs> several months i don't know what it, i didn't join the military but yeah it could be i'm not sure what tech tech boot camps usually entail all right so i think we're yeah, Meteor is really great. I hope the project continues. We have two products. Uh, one um, product is in production use, open source, uh, built with Meteor. And it runs, it's great. In fact, I over, over here have another developer who just did a pull request. Uh, so another part of my live coding series includes working with this uh, well-being application uh, instrument for elder care communities and we have a lot of data visualizations. I need to update these screenshots, but yeah, this is built, it's full stack JavaScript built with Meteor.js, Plotly on the uh, front end doing the charts, you know, MongoDB. So yeah, if you are interested in Meteor, I will be live streaming probably this weekend on this project because we have a really big, um, oh, I, I told you about Meteor, <laughs> okay. Well, that's, you know, I see, I would hope more people are talking about media. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're from Finland. It's pretty close to Sweden, but a little bit different. <laughs> Used to be part of Sweden. All right, is this thing running? Is this thing on? Let me double check. Okay, so I need to Python. Uh, create super user. Did I? Oh, first I'll migrate. Yeah, thanks. We've been, we're really proud of that project. We've been working on it for, I think, almost four years now. Yeah, I haven't live streamed in, in a couple of weeks. I was a little bit out of it. But I'll try to do it more frequently because both of these projects uh, have tight, so to speak, tight deadlines. This Western Friend website, we want to have... Um, essentially the next iteration of it by July. And it includes quite a lot. Uh, it's got a magazine, a bookstore, a multimedia library for videos and PDFs and all sorts of things. Uh, community portal, memorial minutes, a yeah, contact form, a subscription model for like recurring, essentially recurring donations and just the regular donation button. All of that I got to put together in as you can see, I'm just really at the rudiments of it. All right, so, and then jumping between these two projects is pretty interesting. But it does tax my brain a little bit. It's a very common password, yes. All right, we got it up and running again, <clears throat> basically with no content. So what I need to do to test out this author
Just a minimum thing I need to do. Okay. So I need to create a contact. It's not author, but uh, close encounter. First contact. Uh, as a de software developer, a uh, little bit over four years, I've been doing websites and web developments and you know HTMLs and basic JavaScript and CSS uh, for about closer to 10 or 12 years. Oh yeah, well, let's see here. Yeah, I don't know about quitting bootcamp for, quitting bootcamp and thinking about looking for a job. Well, but you don't know if you're ready. Yeah, that's, that's a personal decision for sure. Um, I don't know how is the boot camp pretty costly. I mean, do you have a portfolio? That's actually probably more valuable than the boot camp. If you're building a portfolio as part of the boot camp, you know, then that's good. But yeah, you should definitely be building something practical. Okay, the boot camp is free. Yeah, I mean, well, stick with it if it's if it's free and it's structured and if you're building things like not just reciting you know the answers at the back of the book but if you're actually like building something and maybe something on github so that other people can see it, i think that's gonna you know github is not your resume as the saying goes but uh, without a doubt employers potential employers you know they're gonna look at your github portfolio if it's if it's blank then that you know they just won't have much to go by um, we hired a freelancer recently on um, for the Jerry life and that was one of my main things I asked every one of them is if they had any you know github contributions I could take a look at it wasn't mandatory but I do think it's valuable yeah it's the most important part you got to be good at learning and just willing to learn I mean that's about it uh, every day you know my colleagues and I we we just learn new stuff and build on our previous knowledge so if you got that and you've got the tenacity to like power through some really stressful and frustrating times you know when your code is not working and you're getting errors uh, then you'll probably have good success just keeping with it All right, so I okay, got first. Now we're gonna add a field to the contact model. First name, given name, models. It's gonna be another table, another collection. And if I do this wrong the first time, then I'll just redo it. And we will just call it. We've been using title. Is that max length? I wish I had some IntelliSense on that. Did I have IntelliSense and I just missed it? Huh. What if I do this? VS Code, function signature, I believe I have the Django IntelliSense installed, let me double check. What uh, IDE are you using, do you have any, uh, do you use a text editor or an IDE or? It's there. Why is that so big? No, 
don't need. Well, I think just the title field is good. And I'm going to want to register with the wagtail. I admit if I do say so myself. Now, this is where I had a request for doing a, a nested sidebar, having a nested menu item. And I might just have to look at that here because we have contacts and contact types, which would naturally, or I could put contact types under settings. I think I'll actually do that. Oh, wait a minute. Did I not rebase this? Damn. No, I did. I did. Oh, gosh. It says right there. Oh, yeah. Sublime. Yeah, that's they have a lot of good things about Sublime. Um, I think, you know, any more VS Code and Atom, uh, and since Microsoft owns both GitHub and so essentially both projects, uh, they're borrowing a lot from uh, from uh, Sublime. And there, you know, if there's a function in Sublime, uh, you know, like if you like the key bindings, you know, you can enable Sublime key key bindings in VS Code, for example. I was using Atom for a long time, um, and I would install like this little sidebar thing, whatever it's called. Can't remember the name of it. Was a plugin in Atom, and I would always install that. Uh, VS Code, it ships out of the box. Um, I would install this terminal plugin in Atom so that I could have my terminal running, and you know, I th I'm not sure if it even did split terminals, uh, but that comes with VS Code out of the box. The terminal plugin in Atom was really buggy for me. Uh, so I, um, you know, Adam has some basic Git integration. I think VS Code is a little more simplistic uh, in its Git integration, but it, you know, it does have branching and things like that right out of the box, staging and committing. Um, I love Terminal Editor. It keeps me right in my in the right context. But yeah, that's definitely a preference thing, and it's optional. You don't have to do it. You can just toggle it like that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, that's true. But that's why you get a bigger monitor. <laughs> the code code window and just get a monitor that can accommodate a couple of other panels and when you need the zen mode just you know toggle them away and i think there's even a zen mode in uh adam and vs code let's see how do you do that appearance yeah zen mode control k plus z control k z i'm already in there let's see if i do control k z oh there it is so there's your zen mode if you just want to focus on the code, but it's basically, you know, that, so it's, yeah, optional. Uh, but the thing that really, I started using PyCharm for a while, and, you know, that was actually when I started to realize why having an IDE is important, because it would, like, tell me how to do things. Like, if I click on this, it would give me documentation, um, how to use that that method or whatever with the function signature looks like. Go to definition is super important. You know, being able to see the source, see how things are working. Um, and for some reason, it was kind of serendipitous. My PyCharm just stopped working. I had, you know, license and everything, and uh, it just stopped loading on my Ubuntu machine. I'm not sure if something got corrupted. I was using it at work and home. But I was like, okay, I'm going to give VS Code a try because I'm – I was starting up a new JavaScript project at work and the IntelliSense and I think just all around the package and the plugin ecosystem has been really, uh, really good fit for my workflow and taught me quite a lot. So I'm kind of sticking with it here. So if I recall correctly, I just got to backpedal a little bit because I've been getting off on some digressions. Yeah, alt tab is cool. Uh, now I have two monitors, so I have usually my documentation in preview on one monitor and my code on the other. So when you do enter the workforce, ask your empl employer if they 
provide monitors? That should be one of the questions you ask them during the interview because that'll tell you a little bit about maybe how frugal they are and how, how well they support their employees. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get your, get your employer to, <laughs> when you're working there on a daily basis, have them buy it. Yeah, definitely. But having them at home is also a benefit too. All right, so I just want to double check. I guess I can look over here in my Git graph. There we go, I forked. Okay, after the cleanup migrations. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, reset migrations. There we go. We're on the same. We're on the same. So this is a, a plugin called Git Graph. It's an extension for VS Code. Pretty handy. There's also this really good um, so Git uh, VS Code has built-in debugging. I don't really know how to use it. It's got a whole extension marketplace and it's got this cool git lens that lets you kind of have a lot of the git commands at your fingertip so it shows you the you know what branch you're on what the commits are what files have changed what branches you have remotely and locally what are your configured remotes i just have one remote but at work i have a couple of remotes do you have any code stashed which i do i probably forgot about these and then what are your tags? So I'm not using tags in this repo. So that's pretty handy stuff. And some things, I think this git blame, if you'll notice when I click a line, it's blaming me all the time. That's an extension. Well, yeah, I mean, my salary is I mean, it's like a commensurate salary in uh, European Union for a software developer with four years' experience. So um, I can show you the, the salaries. Engineer. So you give you an idea. That pay scale they have some statistics if you accept their cookies mm, yeah that's about right I mean let's just post this yeah check it out check it out posting it to the to the chat room boom so you can kind of know what to expect yeah sorry I was another Window. I try not to open too many websites on my stream monitor because I don't know if they'll have advertisements and stuff like that. And I don't want to be just displaying a bunch of garbage in this stream. Yep. So you have a good idea when you're hunting for your, um, there's better ones than that side. I think there's even ones that tell you, you know, what to expect after three years of being a software developer, four years of being a software developer, because you should be having an increasing salary every year and being, you know, talking to your employer about a raise. Okay. So we got this contact type with a field. Oh, my word. Doing it. I think it's just gonna be a, a foreign key, foreign key field from the contact to the contact type. Ah, okay, so first let me get this uh, contact type model migrated. Make migrations and I think if I hit Control backspace. Yeah, it does that. That's pretty cool. So you got a big long word, just hit control backspace. Migrate. Yeah. Okay, let's run server now. Now it's not going to show up anywhere. Well, job hop, you so you've heard that job hopping is typically better in terms of salary negotiation. 
than renegotiating contracts. You know, that there's probably some truth to that. I don't know. But I can tell you, though, there's a big cost of job hopping. Like, pretty big. Firstly, you're going to go through the job interview process all from scratch. Get your resume out there. You know, if you're already working, you're going to be doing that outside of work hours or it's going to interrupt your workflow. Uh, you know, you'll be going to multiple interviews, coding interviews. Uh, so it's co costing your time and the salary you negotiate, you know, it's not going to be an order of magnitude bigger. It's probably going to be, you know, a few thousand more a year. I don't know, maybe 10,000 more a year if, if you're lucky or something like that. I don't have any really concrete uh, examples or firsthand experience. I know that I did get a, you know, from what, going from my previous job to the one I'm at now, I did, yeah, I did um, receive a, a pay increase, but that was fueled by necessity, more or less. And um, then the other cost I should mention is that you know, if you've been at a place for a while, you're up to speed, you know things about that software in depth. And, you know, as quick as we are to pick up like a new library or framework or whatever, um, just having the context and rapport with your colleagues and a working flow and a knowledge of a, you know, typically large project, that doesn't come in a week or a month. That takes years to develop. So that's a huge cost you know if you've been working at a place six months or a year and you go to another place you're a greenhorn no matter how advanced of a programmer you are you still have to learn a whole lot and it's not again not going to happen you know just spontaneously or in a couple of weeks so yeah you might get a better salary by doing that but those are also worth factors worth considering. But yeah, let's get your first job out of that boot camp. Yeah, I live in the EU too. I think the U.S. has such a variety of job markets, and I guess the EU also. But uh, you might, you know, have some good luck. So basically, take that, for example, that pay scale side, or do some research about salaries in your neck of the woods what to expect so what i want to do here is get this contact type just into the wagtail admin on a sidebar i think and then i'll figure out how to do it in the settings but that way i can at least get it up uh, on screen so i think i can just crib some code over here from um, 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 wagtail hooks there we go right there and i left these in here so I could control the ordering at some point. So I'll just leave them there. So contact, contact type. right there add to settings menu exclude from Explorer what does this mean Exclude the pages of this type from Wagtail's Explorer view. I don't know what that is. The Explorer view. Well, let's leave it alone for a little bit. Wait a minute. Title. Let's leave that search field. Comment out. 
that. Get a little bit of better space here. All right, where am I? Five it up. Contact types is not there. Or here. What's collection? Mm, no, I know what I forgot to do. Two things I forgot to do. Contact type model admin. The hazards of copy and pasting. Contact types. Ooh, it's up to the top right there. And it's not over here. That's very good. Contact type. So let's say person. Ooh la la. Now, <clears throat> I need a string method there. I think it's like that, right? Heck, man, I don't know. No, I'm winging it. And that's not correct syntax, Buster. I think it's a dunder, dunder method. Whoa, 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 there we go. Oh my. All right, where's the string method? Come on, string. Oh, yes, I'm in Python. And I have to do this in any language. Uh, defining a function. There we go. Now, over here in a five person. Yearly meeting. Monthly meeting. Basically, we decided that to the extent possible, we're going to try to avoid hard coding and things like this into the UI, into the software. All right, cool, Quantum. Thanks for stopping in, man. And hope to see you around again. And if you ever are stream streaming, I'll uh, I'll try to check out your stream too. If you do, you do any live streaming. Anyway, it's been nice having you hang out. Cool, yeah, it's my pleasure. That, that. Let's go ahead and commit before I get too far ahead. Let me double check here. Contact the initial. So this is depending on the initial. And I was creating the model. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned that JavaScript C compiler last time. Okay, now the next step is going to take these contact types and tie it back into the contact model. This is just, should be a foreign key. And uh, then I believe I can wrap it up a little bit. We've been just, just hit the hour mark. So I appreciate everybody for sticking with me. Oh, cool. I think uh, I appreciate hearing that quantum. I think a lot of people here on Twitch are expecting, you know, more like entertainment and sort of the game gaming type community. But maybe we can shift that over to get more develop, you know, people interested in software development. That way, you know, we're like making stuff together. That'd be cool. Not that games are, you know, necessarily a waste of time. I think there's a lot of enrichment you can get from video games too. But uh, it's also nice to be able to create something that might have an effect 
on people's lives. So let's see, I need the foreign key, I need the docs in the foreign key. Yeah, it's just models. And then I don't want it to cascade. Yeah, Django is really good. If I can recommend, just go through the uh, Django tutorial. It, it'll get you set up. You know, it's on the scale of Laravel in terms of uh, being a full-fledged framework that's been under development for a while, has great community, and is still kind of keeping up with the uh, times. It's not, you know, in some ways it shows its age, but it's also, you know, very mature and has a lot of good stuff going on too. Yeah, that's true, but the, it's also worth mentioning that the Django docs really are some of the best docs I've seen on any open source project almost, you know, off the top of my head. Vue.js also has really remarkable docs. It's a, a lot smaller, I think, in scope than Django project. And I'm not sure, Laravel might be one of those, good, those really well-documented projects. But I haven't really been working with that very much. So what's, what's the opposite of Cascade if I just don't want it to do anything when the, the person is deleted? Yeah, MDN is really good too. Right? It's cool, and it's a uh, kind of a wiki, so everybody can contribute to contribute to that. Okay, Laravel doesn't have the greatest docs. Django, foreign key, foreign key, on delete. to one relationship, which is what we want, requires two positional arguments. First is the model, which is going to be, so let's go ahead and start there. We will call that, and this is actually going to be the contacts. So contact type. Models, foreign key to the contact. Type model on delete equals models do nothing, not cascade. Set null. When the object referenced by a foreign key is deleted, Django will emulate the big hair of SQL. Oh, here's some good IntelliSense. We're just going to set null. Now I believe that means we need blank and null to be true. Hmm, which is not really what I'm wanting to do, I think. But I don't know what else to do. I guess we don't have to put the contact type in. What did I do wrong here? Left out a comma. There we go. Now black took over and did my formatting for me. All right, contact type. And then we're gonna just display this field panel. Oh, you know what I remember now. We need to figure out a way of Letting the editor override the slug. I don't know how to do that. That was something that came up in conversation. Hmm. I was going to look at the page model to see how they do that. But let's see if this works first. So now we have a new field. Need to migrate that. So now we need to add a contact, which we have. And it has the contact type, and it's working. The person. Yeah, that looks good. 
Now let's go ahead and add the couple of things to enhance. Let me commit this. Basically, I'm gonna add the contact type as a column here and allow them to be filtered or searched by contact type. And probably leave off for another day how we can get this slug to be modifiable. If you notice when I edited it, it doesn't appear here. So when, when you first define a contact, it auto generates the slug. But if I edit this contact, firsty, contacty, the slug doesn't update. A slug is um, basically part of a URL. So when we have you know websites and people are navigating them, each page has a unique address, and that web address can only contain you know certain characters, underscores, hyphens, alphanumeric characters and each route represents an you know a unique something like a document you're trying to retrieve is the model and so if we're displaying contacts on their own page each contact having its own page we need a unique route so what we typically do is like say website.com slash contact slash this one to retrieve this one right and that in this part right here is the slug the slug is the part of the URL that it uniquely identifies like an entity. Yeah, universal resource locator I think is fine in the context of these. Um, like this is a URL bar. So I think they're sort of interchangeable. But URIs are more broad. And of course I'm in Finland. So a web address, this is your address bar, is a web resource on a computer network. But URIs are more generic. And yeah, they've definitely have superseded it. That a URI can have any scheme, so it doesn't have to be HTTP or HTTPS, different authorities. But yeah, a URL, basically URLs are a subset of URIs. Yeah, that's right. So, what we would call the path. It's part of the path. And the path can be, you know, the slug could be the path or the slug could be part of the path. So we got this contact and this one, those, that's the path. Uh, I think Laravel, you know, probably has a router. Routing. The PHP framework for web artisans. Yeah, so basically, this would, uh, where would your slug be here? So user is your path. Here it is, route parameters. And this would be your slug. So your slug basically is what kind of uniquely identifies a user you're trying to retrieve here. And Laravel also has a slug helper. Oh, generates a URL friendly slug. So basically, it has the strip spaces and put hyphens in the middle of it and for all the spaces. And make sure it's unique. That's the key thing. Is you don't want your slugs to be duplicated. Otherwise, you'll have a collision. You won't be able to uniquely identify firsty contacty. So yeah, coming back to the slugs later. But I want to add, so commit these changes, changes. Foreign key, add contact type field. Ambiguity, collisions. Unique identifiers. Okay, let's see. Now another cool thing we can do is add the column up here and make it searchable. Oh yeah, UUIDs would be cool, but we want human friendly, human friendliness. Oh, where am I? I'm in models, oh gosh. Right here, 
Wagtail hooks. Here we go. Here we go. Contact model admin. Now it's automatically. What's it doing? Oh. Hmm. It's not going to display the contact type here. This might be non trivial. I'll have to try it though. Given name, family name, full name, slug. I don't even know if this is going to work. See if I put the the names in a different order. Does that have an effect? Just to make sure something's happening. Family name given name. So that's not actually working. Oh, what the heck, dude! Contact model admin. Contact model admin. See what I did wrong. This is that, and that is this. Dude, I totally messed it up. All right, I must be getting tired. Full name slug. Contact type. Contact type. Save it. Now black should be formatting this for me. Contact types. Male, male, so it should be. Settings menu, true. Contact search fields. This display is not correct. Actually, I'll just delete those. All right, everything looks good. Yeah, we on this site. We're not like a Facebook site. We're never even hoping to get to Facebook scale. There we go, actually just worked. Um, and we have a search bar, really great, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And so if I search for contacty, well, let me just, oh my goodness, where's your group? partial searching man this is awesome this is just such an awesome thing it's when you have a really mature you know CMS like this where your code is basically configuration I mean this is at such a high level of abstraction I just you know you just specify how things should work like dig almost declaratively yeah, it is you know display these fields order them by these list 10 yeah this is really remarkable this has been my general experience with Django and then the wagtail just adds a layer of like kind of polish and usability on top. Yeah, partial searching. If I do EI, it comes up with hey. If I do ER, oh, we'll come there. Wait, wait, I have to actually. So, okay. Uh, let's see, ER. It comes with hey there, though, that one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's partial search right in the middle of strings and everything. I think it's just powered by the Django PH. Nobody has PA. 
page in their name. <clears throat> okay, good. Contact type. Later I'll see if we can filter. Search Jane does a wagtail. Because Django Admin has this really nice sidebar that you can kind of have a faceted, faceted uh, pagination and stuff. Search fields. Here it is, list filter. I think this is the one, list filter. So let's commit this. And basically I, I'm just gonna be generic here, but fix. <laughs> model admins, whatever. This one, list filter, let's see what this does. Let's try it out, let's try it out. For the contact type, list filter. No, no, no. For the contact equals a tuple of field names, contact type. Let's see what this does. Refresh it. Oh, uh oh, dang it. Hey, that didn't give me a tuple. Why is it doing that? Oh, you know, maybe I have to do this. It's a little too opinionated, if you ask me. If I had to put a comma there. Oh, dude, so cool. Oh, man. Mary's going to love this. Wow. I bet we can like add buttons here to like select multiple contacts or maybe send an email to contact to contact. Some fuzzy searching. Uh, yeah, this, so fuzzy searching. Yeah, one character off or yeah, so definitely let me think. Wagtail supports several search backends. And by default, it's using, you know, essentially Postgres and Django, but it's got a query set API backends. Here we go. So if we wanted, so let's go by default using the database backend, which in our case is going to be, well, SQL, Lite, and then Postgres. So it has some limitations only to only intended to be used in development on small sites. It can't offer can't order results by relevance, severely hampering its usefulness when searching a large collection of pages. It has an uh, Postgres SQL. Okay, so you actually have to search that, specify that. If your site has less than a million pages, you probably want to use this one. And let's see, does it do fuzz F U Z Z? It doesn't mention it. Supports all the search features available in Wagtail. Easy to add add-ons, excellent performance, faster to re-index than Elasticsearch if you use Postgres 9 or higher, 9.5 or higher. Mm. I don't know if it's gonna do fuzzy searching though. But then in that case, you would probably look something like this elastic search. And we're, you know, you can host on AWS. We're also looking at uh, hosting options right now. We haven't, haven't narrowed it down really, but uh, uh, one of the choices, uh, what do they call Divio Cloud offers managed elastic search instances because I, I, I don't want to manage a database instance. so. I'm really looking for a provider that can do that for me. DigitalOcean does offer managed Postgres. Divio Cloud will manage all of your infrastructure. Yeah, probably not called fuzzy canonically, but uh, you know, that is in the docs for Elasticsearch. So yeah, fuzzy querying, fuzzy. So yeah, you might check out Elastic for that those needs. We're not going to be using at this point in the development 
but we do want to use Elasticsearch to power this site, but we haven't got down that path yet. We don't even know where we're going to host it yet. So one step at a time. All right, I think this is nice. This is really coming together nicely. Um, so we were able to add contact type. It just worked. I didn't even have to do any fancy traversal just by defining that string method. Um, Django and Wagtail are smart enough to reach over into that related contact and render it as a string. In the UI, uh, with one line of code, I was able to add this nice filter bar. It just works as advertised, works as expected. Uh, one line of code, I was able to get add a, a not a fuzzy search, but like a partial searching search engine. So let me commit this. Oh, did I? Oh, I thought I hit the wrong button. So I'll take a quick look. Since there are... Okay, yeah, Quantum, thanks for hanging out, man. It's been nice chatting. Yeah, get your food and some sleep, and I'm going to have to do the same, but I'm just going to take a quick glance at this uh, this slug, because this is really bothering me, and if, I, if it seems insurmountable or something that I won't be fighting with, I will come back to it later. Mary and I agreed that we could take it one step at a time, basically, with this, but it is annoying that now they're firsty contacty, and it's just his first contact. All right, thanks, Quantum. That's a good acronym, DFTBA. Don't forget to be awesome. Okay, so if I look at this page model, I think the closest one I can find over here is going to be in the magazine. Magazine models. Oi, Casty. I'm going to go to definition with the F12 key. just want to see they got a slug field model slug field so if I look oh, oh, oh yeah I see why that's this is all red because it's in my environment and my git is ignoring the heck out of it so I come back to my contact and I just take a look I'm gonna compare these side by side so I've got a slug I said it's an auto slug field because I didn't want to do all the fancy footwork. So, you know, maybe auto slug field has a setting for this. Let me check their docs. All right, auto slug fields and extended slug fields able to automatically resolve name clashes. That's the key thing, uniqueness. I didn't want to have to write a bunch of code to do this. Can also perform the following tasks on save. Populate itself from another field using populate from. So where are we at? Auto slug field. Populate from. Come on, Black, where are you? Why aren't you putting these all on different lines? So I'm populating from given name and family name just for legibility there. Here, I'll do this too. Makes it a little easier to see. Use custom slugify function. I didn't want to mess with that. Preserve uniqueness. Another task is mandatory. You can have auto-populated non-unique fields, manually entered unique ones, or absolutely unique within a given date. All right, that's cool. Always update. The slug is updated each time the model instance is saved. Oh, dude, no way. Is this just gonna work? Oh, rue the world. All right, yo, let's, let's try it out. Shh, don't tell nobody that it was easy. No, it's not easy. Oh, goodness. Got unexpected. Argument, but it's there.
Oh heck, just a different, there goes some nice intelligence. What version of this package am I running? Is it that I'm reading the wrong docs or the wrong version installed or a different package installed? What's going on here? Tag it, no. What the heck? Crispy Farms Extensions Model Cluster Registration. Tag it, Treebeard. Rust Framer. Drop.js. HTML lib. Let's see something. Oh, goodness. There's a lot more there now. Auto pervade. And this one, at this. Gonna break some stuff. Tomo wrapped. I don't see this auto slip view. Is it part of core? Is it? It's perhaps Django extensions. Oh, I'm reading the wrong docs. Django extensions. Yeah, it has an auto slug field. That's right. And some other cool stuff I haven't really gotten to uh, to check out, but it's got this. You can generate uh, a graph a graphical representation of your models. They don't have an example here, but it's with uh, PyGraph is. Yeah, yeah, auto slug. Auto slug. <laughs> it's not even in the docs. What? Well, forget about it. Let's just see if this works. What's changed? Oh, a lot. This is mainly with lint. Code style linting. Something else to have. I don't know what all those are. These should be dev requirements. I'm going to go ahead and check them in, though. My model, not poi, is working with override is true. And we'll see if this page will run, will load. Now, contact me. I am a contact. I am a contact, it worked. I am a contact. And they don't collide, boom. Oh goodness gracious. That's really a relief. I love when this stuff that, like that works. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to try any more things today. I'm going to leave off at that. That's a really good feeling to have it. Just work with one line of code. Okay, very cool. Contact types feature is coming along a little bit. So yeah, just to recap, we've uh, added a new settings page today called Contact Types. So let's the uh, content manager enter these contact types, uh, edit them. Uh, all we have right now is just uh, the title field, and that's probably possibly all we need. We'll have to figure that out a little bit later. Uh, then we added the contact model, giving a, a foreign key so you could select a contact type. Um, added a function to display it as a string in the contacts table here. Tweak the slug. I'm gonna hide that, actually one last commit. I'm gonna hide the slug from view. Leave it auto-generated. Not gonna let the admin override it. And I'll just explain that that was a, a decision, a unilateral decision. And if uh, Mary wants to override this, she can. That's cool by me. When I added the field panel slug to the edit form, it just doesn't work. It doesn't show up here, so that needs to be cleaned up anyway. 
But the other part is in the wagtail hooks when I display it in the table. I just don't think that's necessary anymore. The slug is sort of an internal thing. It's a human readable URL segment. So yeah, now we're good to go. It cleans up our table just a little bit. That way I like it. I am a contact, I am a contact. Great. So clean up. Something like that. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. It's been really good. Hey, what's up? Totally not. Well, hey, Sebastian. What's up, dude? Totally not Sebastian, though. Hey, I'm just wrapping up this session. Darn. Have you been here the whole time, or did you just recently hop in to the chat? <sighs> okay, 20 seconds ago. Oh, man, because I've been broadcasting for an hour and a half, but... Uh, I pretty much achieved what I as much, about as much as I can kind of do at th this time of the day, and I've already had a full full day at work and everything too. So uh, I don't have a schedule. That's really good. I'm gonna try to be more regular with my broadcasting. But that was one of the things on on uh, Code Buddies I was having troubles with was scheduling them in advance. It felt a little too kind of rigid, and nobody was even showing up anyway. So. I started hanging out over here where I could just sort of hop on and start streaming whenever I feel up to it. But I'll try to do at least one stream or two a week. And my schedule is pretty much around my son. Yeah, if I've got some time in the evening or if he's asleep and I'm, and I'm not tired, I'll, I'll hop out here on the weekends. Uh, I'll hop on here and stream. But yeah, today we were working in uh, this Django Wagtail site. I'm going to be working on another Meteor project this weekend, the Jerry Life project. So if you want to hang out then, I can ping you in advance. Uh, or do you have any time this weekend? I'll say, yeah, okay, I'll send you a message on Twitter. I'm tentatively going to aim for Friday, Friday night around, uh, let's say 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern European time. So GMT plus 3. I think we're in the same time zone, aren't we? Are you GMT, UTC plus 2 or 3? Yeah, the kid dependencies are important, so we have to <laughs> work around their schedule. Plus 1. Okay, so you're a couple hours off. All right. And we just we just switched over to daylight time, so or I think it's anyway our clocks just shifted, so we're now plus three. We were plus two. All right, well Sebastian, it's good to see you, and I hope to see you around. And yes, I will give you a direct message on Twitter next time I stream. And thanks uh, everybody else who's been in the stream, and you know feel free to hop in the chat if you ever have any questions or comments about the code style or the project. Uh, what we're trying to build or anything like that. I'm definitely open to discuss other topics than the project I'm working on as well. All right, well, everybody have a great day and hope to see you around.